Pursuant to Internal Revenue Service guidance, be advised that any federal tax advice contained in this program is not intended to be used and it cannot be used by any person or entity for the purpose of avoiding any tax penalties that may be imposed by the Internal Revenue Service or any other U.S. federal taxing authority or agency or promoting, marketing, or recommending to another party any transaction or matter addressed in this show. The opinions expressed by the host and the guests are their own and may not be used as authoritative advice. Any use of this material without the written consent of the host is strictly prohibited. You're listening to the IRS Radio Hour with your host, Attorney Stephen Leahy, on AM560, The Answer. Tune in every week at 5 for an informative discussion about IRS obligations, credit card debt, mortgage default, collection activity, and how to resolve these legal issues using tax resolution, debt settlement, mortgage loan modification, foreclosure defense, and bankruptcy. Your host is Stephen Leahy a Chicago attorney and the principal at Oakham Tax Resolution and the law office of Stephen A. Leahy, PC. Stephen is the author of Deal With Your IRS Problems Today. IRS and debt issues are serious, but there is help. There are resolutions. So get ready and take notes during the IRS Radio Hour. And now, here's your host, Attorney Stephen Leahy. Hello, Chicago. Coming you... Coming to you from Studio C, it's the IRS Radio Hour on AM 560, The Answer. Quiet, numbskulls, I'm broadcasting. Our show is sponsored no. <laughs> Our show is sponsored by Opum Tax Resolution and the law office of Stephen A. Leahy. We help people dealing with IRS problems, audits, levies, liens, garnishments, collections, and payroll tax issues. We also deal with mortgage foreclosures, loan modifications, bankruptcy, and other debt-related issues. So if you have any of these problems, or if you know someone who does, then you should give us a call at 312-664-6649. I am your host, Attorney Stephen Leahy. And I want to introduce my co-host, Jim Leahy. Oh, I got moved up, Dom co-host. Hey, Uh, great. Yeah, now I get 100% raise, you know. Or color commentator. Color commentator. Well, let's not talk about that. Okay. Anyway, well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. If it's Sunday at 5, it's the IRS Radio Hour. This is a show about helping people with their financial troubles and helping them get out of their troubles. But this is also a show of uh, of, of local issues, news, sports, family, politics, things that happen in the Chicagoland area, things that we think that uh, are important to bring to your attention. Uh, this week we are going to we are here a little early because of the uh, Thanksgiving holiday. Mm-hmm. So actually, we're kind of lucky because today we're 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 well not lucky because poor Debbie has to be here with us on a Wednesday night when everybody before else Thanksgiving. Be, so we we haven't had our Thanksgiving dinner yet. No, we haven't, and we haven't watched the Bears beat Detroit, which ha- they won't. Yeah, we but we watched them beat Tampa Bay. Well, they might. So we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that later. We never. <laughs> but the good thing we is, have a we have a packed. Uh, yeah, first segment we, that we, we do have get a to. first segment because this a lot of a lot of interesting this things have happened. This is a heck of a week, and uh, right. you know, uh, little did we know in night in, two, in November two thousand eight, when uh, the president was just elected a week later, Rahm Emanuel was in uh, um, in with the Wall Street Journal, mm-hmm. and he gave a little interview, and he said this: "You never want a serious crisis to go to waste, and what I mean by that, it's an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before." And so we've had one serious crisis, crisis after, after another. This is just every week there's a crisis. It's a crisis. Those kids are on the border. There's a crisis there. We have a crisis yeah. with the with uh, with with the immigration. The banking, we have a crisis yeah. with with banking. We have a crisis with guns. We have a crisis. It's just it's it's unbelievable what these what these people have done. Well, this week the president came to Chicago mm-hmm. and he gave a speech. And in the speech, he well, was, remember because he keeps telling us that he didn't change the law. Yeah, that's right. Because you he can't, can't change, change the law. law. Yeah, but he gave a speech here at the uh, at at the Polish uh, um, yeah, community on the, on center on the west side. Yeah, on the west side, and he was talking about. Uh, and well, that's what he said. Somebody was complaining about him, and they they were they they were heckling him. And this was his response to them. I understand you may disagree, but uh, we've got to be able to talk honestly about these issues. All right. Now, you're absolutely right that. There have been significant numbers of deportations. That's true. But what you're not paying attention to is the fact that I just took an action to change the law. Now, so that's point number one. 
He did. He took an action to change the law. He just said that. Now, this is like when he was running, uh, when they were doing Obamacare, and he said, it's not a tax until it, know, until yeah. it was forced to be a tax. And then he had to go into the Supreme Court and say, well, you know, it was a tax. It is a tax. And so, Gruber, at least Gruber, was like, well, we had to hide it. We knew that it was a tax. We couldn't tell everybody it was a tax because Americans are so stupid. We'll remember, we'll do that. And that's the same thing with this. Americans are so stupid, we don't know that he's really changing the law, when, even though they tell us he's not changing the law. We he all wants know he's to brag so badly. To what he did. He wants to stand up and point to himself saying, I did this. I'm the one who did this. This has been this way since for the last six years, ladies and gentlemen. You have to remember uh, what, you know, what became, how did they pass Obamacare? It was the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. It was the, it was the exact same thing with the exact same ways. And it's, it's to bend this rule, twist this. What, what does this mean? It reminds me of President Clinton. But it depends on what the meaning of it is, is. Yeah, and it goes back to, you know, they, we've been fighting this fight since 1964. You know, when That's Ronald right. Reagan started talking about Last, this in 1964. Last week so we, we played have a, a clip. Yeah. I have a good clip here because yeah. it inter it interwinds Reagan's spe famous speech. With Nancy speech. Pelosi and a lot of uh, all the Democratic leadership. Bar Barney Frank, Nancy Pelosi. And this is, uh, in a nutshell, uh, Obama. What we've been talking about for the last right. eight months. Whether we believe in our capacity for self-government or whether we abandon the American Revolution and confess that a little intellectual elite in a far distant capital can plan our lives for us better than we can plan them ourselves. Give us more authority and more ability. For all of this talk about all uh, rules, we make them up as we go along. A government can't control the economy without controlling people. And they know when a government sets out to do that, it must use force and coercion to achieve its purpose. Put the legislation together to control the people. We'll go through the gate, the gate's closed, we'll go over the fence, the fence is too high, we'll pull vault in. If that doesn't work, we'll parachute in, but we're going to get health care reform passed. They also knew, those founding fathers, that outside of its legitimate functions, government does nothing as well or as economically as the private sector of the economy. There needs to be a focus on a, an immediate increase in spending. I mean, I, I do think at a certain point you've made enough money. The more the plans fail, the more the planners plan. You're telling me we got to go spend money to keep from going bankrupt? The answer, yeah, that's what I'm telling you. We have so many people who can't see a fat man standing beside a thin one without coming to the conclusion the fat man got that way by taking advantage of the thin one. I think there are a lot of very rich people out there whom we can tax at a, at a point down the road and recover some of this money. The trouble with our liberal friends is not that they're ignorant. It's just that they know so much that isn't so. They'll be crying out for public options. It's the cost, I think, of having uh, the kind of America that we want to have. Our natural unalienable rights are now considered to be a dispensation of government. And freedom has never been so fragile, so close to slipping from our grasp as it is at this moment. I don't worry about the Constitution on this, to be honest. What good is reading the bill if it's a thousand pages? We have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it. Those voices don't speak for the rest of us. We'll preserve for our children this, the last best hope of man on earth. There have been times where America's shown arrogance. Well, I think it's time we ask ourselves if we still know the freedoms that were intended for us by the founding fathers. I don't know if we do. I, I, that's very, you know, this, um, that came from a Sean Hannity uh, a show that Video, compilation yes, right. was, mm -hmm. you know, was on Sean Hannity's show, and Sean's on this station. And it also came from the Ronald Reagan parts of that come from a a clip of 1964. It was uh, it was October 27th, 1964, just before the uh, about a month before the election of Barry Goldwater and uh, and and Lyndon Johnson. Uh, of course, Lyndon Johnson won the election, but this was it's called a time for choosing, and that's going to be on our our Facebook page. I. My kids, you know, they always look at me because when they hear I'm listening to it, they go, they run because they know that I'm going to sit them down <laughs> and, and make them listen to this. Listen to and they're like, Dad, what does this mean? I, you know, this is 1964, and listen to how relevant it is today. This We're still fighting that battle. I th and, and I think well, that's what Ronald Reagan was trying to tell us. The battle never stops. The, the, as no long as if we stop fighting the battle, then we will lose. That We won't have the freedoms. That's, and unless you know, we're out there fighting for them, we won't have our freedoms. It's some, they're always there to try to take them away from us. And we have to be vigilant and try and to stop it. And it's up to you to tell your fa to, to pass it on to your children. To have your children understand. And I think that that's what my, you know, my dad, I don't think 
think that they took this as serious as we're taking it. Maybe because nothing has come this close to being this tyrannical. Well, I, don't I mean, know. that was at sixty four, Jim. He thought it was that close. He thought we were at the edge. Yeah, but nobody and, would nobody would even consider doing what's being done today. I mean, I guess it's just it's, well, I know, guess passing well, law, you know. I, I guess you, you changing a law with, on an executive order, and yeah. ch- or you know, and I, there was a great thing with uh, George Stephanopoulos asked him, you know, well, what can't the next president just stop uh, and don't enforce capital gains taxes, for instance? Oh no, they can't do that. They no. can't do that. Well, well, why couldn't they? Well, you know, you would change the law. They get, and, they get and so do, if well, the law is coming, we're going to stop them. That's right. So or if the law is coming after you and you have IRS problems, because the IRS is is the biggest, baddest one of all of them. <laughs> Think of this: the IRS is we're going to enforce That's all right. these laws. And if they're coming after about. you, you have you need help. You should call, give us a call at 312-664-6649. This is the IRS Radio Hour on AM 560, The Answer. Be right back. Hi, I'm Stephen Leahy, a local Chicago attorney. I believe that God has given each of us unique abilities, and we are to use those abilities to help others. I have helped hundreds of Chicagoans recover from financial disaster. And if the IRS is threatening you with liens, levies, or garnishments, or you have years of unfiled tax returns, I want to help you. Compliance is the first step to resolving your IRS problem, and compliance begins with your 2013 taxes. Are you ready? If you call now, make an appointment, and visit my office for a free confidential consultation, we will complete your personal 2013 tax return at no charge, even if you don't hire me to resolve your IRS problem. Remember, I'm a local Chicago attorney. Investigate me. Simply Google Stephen, with a V, Leahy, L-E-A-H-Y, reviews, to find out what the Better Business Bureau and others have said. Or call me at 312-664-6649. Again, it's 312-664-6649. Visit us on the web at chicagotaxteam.com. Call me today. Welcome back to the IRS Radio Hour with attorney Stephen Leahy. Stephen has helped hundreds of Chicagoans recover from financial disaster, and he wants to help you and your family. There are resolutions, and you will hear about all those resolutions during today's informative discussion on the IRS Radio Hour on AM560, The Answer. Now, here's your host, Attorney Stephen Leahy. Welcome back. I am your host, Attorney Stephen Leahy, and this is the IRS Radio Hour on AM560, The The Answer. Answer. Well, Steve, this is the section of the show where you go to your blog and tell me, what is on the blog this week? Well, this this week on the blog, I wrote about the IRS Fresh Start Initiative, <laughs> and you'll see anybody who has IRS problems. If you go online, you'll see all you'll see this all over the place. The you know IRS Fresh Start Initiative. Take advantage of this new program. It's a fairly new program. It started in uh, it was in 2011 where they changed some of the rules and they made some of these things a little bit easier to take advantage of. So uh, one of the first things they did, so some of the programs. So, for instance, uh, we talk we talk on the show a lot about there's the six things you can do if you owe the IRS money. And the first thing you can do is you can pay them, you know, write them a check, be done with them, or borrow money from somebody. Oh, a check? I have a check. <laughs> it's it's got to be a good check. Oh, well, I don't have that. <laughs> I can't help you then. Uh, or borrow money from someone, but get the IRS out, uh, get, get, them, get them out of your life. Uh, second thing you do is an installment agreement, and and uh, the third thing you can do is an offer and compromise, and the fourth thing you can do is a currently not collectible status. The fifth thing you can do is bankruptcy, and the sixth thing you you can do, and this is what a lot of people do before they come to see me, is you can continue to do nothing. There's okay. a seventh thing. What's that? Leave the country. Well, I said that, but they will. Oh, that's right. They can catch it. That's though. right. That's right. Forget that. Uh, so, th- so th- of those things, we talked about installment agreements, offer and offer and compromise, and also the currently not collectible. They have changed some of the rules. Three things, actually, uh, four areas that are that are, were changed. One was uh, the offer and compromise, and they changed some of the the parameters. Same thing with the installment agreement. They changed some of the parameters. And we're going to get into that in just a second. Uh, one, another thing they did is they changed the way uh, getting rid of a tax lien. If you have a tax lien against you, they changed some of the rules on the, on on that. Another thing they did is they changed uh, some of the penalties. So in 2011, when they changed this, if you owed, if you had some penalties from 2010, if I didn't pay, uh, uh, if because of late payment, I didn't have the money to pay them, they forgave some of the. Late file, late payment penalties. Not late filing. If I filed late, they still they still got me with a penalty. But if I failed to pay, they they waived that penalty for a year. Um, 
obviously that's a long time ago. It doesn't help us today. Um, but the things that they did change. So, for instance, uh, some weeks ago we talked about the installment agreement and different types of installment agreement. One type of installment agreement is what they call a streamlined installment agreement. And this streamlined in- installment agreement makes it easier. It streamlines the process that the IRS will agree to. So generally, if I owe the IRS money, they're going to ask me to get all this information. i got to give them my tax. Uh, well, they have my tax returns, but I have to provide them anyway. And I have to provide my pay stubs, and I have to p- provide my bank statements, and I have to have a full disclosure of all my assets and all my liabilities. And it takes a long time, and it's very lengthy, and it's a, it's, it's a fairly hard process. But the streamlined process cuts through all that, and they just say, well, if you owe it used to be if I owed less than 25000 they would just set up a payment plan, and the payment plan would be up to 60 months. Okay, so now with the, the Fresh Start initiative, what they did in the installment agreement streamline is that they raised it from 25000 to 50000 So now if I owe $50,000 or less, I can get the streamlined program. And again, it makes it a lot easier. It also, uh, also they... Um, the streamlined program goes to <laughs> um, again. It was twenty five thousand. Now it's fifty thousand. And uh, the set. Okay, so now next thing is the offer and compromise. The offer is really the big thing that changed the most because offers were always um, they were only like twenty percent or eighteen percent were were granted. So a lot of people would go through this. The process, because it is a hard process. That one in an offer and compromise, you do have to give them all this financial information, and they go through all your financial information, and then they determine, and they have this calculation that they use. So there's three big, three big um, determinations of what, how much they'll accept. One is what is my disposable income every month. Every month, so they look at my income and they subtract from that some expenses. Now the IRS were notoriously uh, stingy. They didn't give me a lot of expenses. So, for instance, if I had student loans, they didn't permit me to deduct the student loans to determine how much they would accept. But they forced you to pay them. Yes, I still had to pay them, but they wouldn't accept. So if they're trying to calculate how much of a lump sum, because remember, an offer and compromise is when the is when the IRS agrees to take a lump sum payment to settle my IRS debt. Uh, OK, so if they're if they're going if they're um, if they're going to use if they're going to use they're not going to deduct all my expenses. Well, my disposable income number is going to be very large then. Yes. And so when they and and the next thing is the multiplier. Okay. So the multiplier, if I could pay them, if I could pay the IRS within uh, under under five months, the multiplier used to be forty eight. So forty eight months. So if I say, for instance, I had I had five hundred dollars a month in disposable income. Well, they would multiply that by forty eight. And then they would, so that's $24,000 that they would accept plus my assets. Well, now the, the multiplier has been changed to 12. So now it's only one year. So that's a huge difference, right? Now it's only $6,000, uh, a, a fraction of what they used to agree to. Uh-huh. If, I, if I could pay them between six months and 24 months, well, now the multiplier is 24, and it used to be 60. So, so a huge difference. Huge difference. But and they want the money in less time. No, it's the same. That's the same amount of time that they would have done it before. It's just now the number, the multiplier has changed. And lower. So much lower. That's right. And again, if they're, if they're agreeing to a lot more um, expenses, and so I can deduct a lot more expenses than I used to be able to deduct, then my, then my monthly uh, disposable income is less, and then the multiplier is less, now that number is going to be something that I might be able to really a- actually take advantage of uh-huh. and use it to, to get rid of my debt. Now, the third, the third aspect that, w- that we were talking about is, um, is your assets. How many assets do you have? So the IRS goes back, and if I have any equity, if I have, for instance, if I have um, uh, an IRA, and that's where a lot of people get caught. In, well, yeah, I have an IRA. Um, if I have a lot of money in my IRA and it's more than I owe the IRS, well, guess what? They're not going to agree to an offer and compromise because they can always take your IRA and pay off your debt. Now, there's a, there are ways to protect your IRA to make sure that they they can't take it. So when the IRS has a lien against you, um, one of the things is they only have the rights that you have. 
So if I have an IRA and I don't have a right to access that money until I'm 65 or until I'm 70, well, then the IRS doesn't have a right to access that money until I'm 65 or 70. So they can't take it away from me. But if I have it, if I can go to my IRA and I could take it out and pay the penalty. But does that make them want to wait? Uh, no, they, because remember, there's a statute of limitations. So if once I'm, you start paying, so if I'm in my forty, if I'm forty five and I can't take that money out until I'm sixty five, the statute of limitations will have run and they uh, won't be able to take that money from me. So uh-huh. that's one way I can protect my IRA. But most people don't have that kind of IRA. Most people have an IRA that they can get at, but they have to pay a penalty if they get at it. Mm-hmm. So now the next thing that they did is they changed some of the liens, some some of the rules when it comes to liens, because they understand that if you have a lien against you. It makes it very hard for you to conduct your business. You can't really borrow any more money. It affects your credit score tremendously. So they've they've changed some of the rules to let you take off, to release the lien, and also take it off your credit report, which they never used to do before. So it used to be that if I owed less than $5,000, then the IRS wouldn't put a lien against me. Now, if I owe less than $10,000, then generally the IRS won't put a lien against me. Really? And another thing that they did is if I owe less than $25,000 and I've made three payments on an installment agreement, I'm going to pay them in full, and I make three payments on an installment agreement, then if I apply, they'll probably release the lien again. And so I won't have a lien. I could still owe the IRS money, and they'll release my lien. That's something they never would do before. So these these changes have been a huge uh, benefit for people who owe the IRS, and if and you should take advantage of them. Okay, I used to tell people that the offer and compromise was actually a farce. It didn't really work. It didn't work for for almost anybody. But now it does work. Now it is starting to to help a lot of people. And so if you does that just come like say, can you go back retroactively now? To like three years before yes, it was Yes, if covered? I owed the taxes, be- yes. Ah, so, so I go back to 2007, redo my taxes, then, and then these rules apply to These there. rules apply to any money I owe the IRS today, no matter where it's from. Okay, so if you have IRS problems, one of these programs might help you. Call me at 312-664-6649. And oh. remember, ChicagoTaxTeam.com. There's lots of answers there. Okay, we'll see you on the other side. Hi, I'm Stephen Leahy, and for me, success comes when I help other people. That's why I became an attorney. I know the economy has taken a financial toll on many families and businesses, but I believe that they can recover from their financial problems if they just get the right help. I'm here in Chicago, and I know that if people improve their financial situation, they improve their lives, and I want to help. If the IRS is attacking you with liens, levies, or garnishments, if your mortgage company has threatened foreclosure, or collector's calls are driving you mad, you need help. We listen to your financial situation, find out what's really going on, and develop a workable solution. Remember, I'm right here in Chicago, and your first visit is completely free and confidential. I will tell you on the spot what can be done and what it will cost. If you are looking for help, you've come to the right place. Call me, Stephen Leahy, at 312-664-6649. Again, that's 312-664-6649. Or visit us on the web at chicagotaxteam.com. Call me today. You're listening to the IRS Radio Hour with attorney Stephen Leahy on AM560, The Answer. Attorney Stephen Leahy brings his passion and expertise to your radio each and every week during the IRS Radio Hour. Tune in, take notes, and be educated. Learn your options resolving financial obstacles that face so many. And now, back to the IRS Radio Hour with your host, attorney Stephen Leahy. Welcome back. I am your host, attorney Stephen Leahy, and this is the IRS Radio Hour on AM 560. The, the answer. answer. Well, Steve, this is, a, this is the part of the show where we go into our IRS saga. As the IRS turns. Boy, this started out as just a joke, but, you know, last week when we got off of the show, because uh, we usually do it on a Friday, we found it's, that's usually document dump day. But since t- t- today's the day before Thanksgiving and we're here uh, a little later than we usually are, we were here for the document dump. But we also have the Friday document dump. dump yeah. because oh, that's, that's probably coming they, up this week. Because, yeah. No, no, the last week because oh, that, that's, right. that's when they had 30,000. 30,000 lost lowest learner emails. 30,000 that, that our friend Koskinen told us, assured us, could not be recovered. That's right. They couldn't be recovered. And, then, and yet they, they found 30,000. 
And I wonder why. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, and the funny thing is, and then today we had a document dump that there were t- there were twenty five hundred documents of mm-hmm. uh, what, now what was it document that that uh, the, well this was what, the, there was an article from yeah. Paul Bedard oh Paul Bedard of the Washington, uh, Washington Examiner. Examiner and I'm just gonna in a in a shocking revelation the ter- the Treasury Inspector General has identified some twenty five hundred documents that potentially show taxpayer information held by the Internal Revenue Service being shared with President Obama's White House. The discovery was revealed to the group Cause of Action, which has sued for access to any of the documents. It charges that the IRS and the, and the White House have harassed taxpayers. In an email from Justice Department's tax office, an official revealed the high number of documents, suggesting the White House has was hip deep in probes of taxpayers, likely including conservatives and tax, Tea Party Groups associated with the IRS scandal. So the IRS has private these documents that we said they're not supposed to reveal. They're not supposed to share them with the other side. Remember that that we had this uh, some some weeks ago where they was revealed that they sent a, a million. Or, uh, uh, di- oh well, the, they that they admitted to there was a uh, uh, yeah a million um, documents that yeah. were sent to the Justice Department. Oh, but but that was an accident. The, remember the and Justice then we found said, out that they sent the information for the Koch brothers. And then we found out that they sent the information for the for that one uh, for the religious group in Oklahoma. The Oklahoma judge had found out that they're sharing. Now, do you remember uh, this, ladies and gentlemen, where we had a where you had Koskinen, Mr. Koskinen, or Commissioner Koskinen, Commissioner, uh, um, in front of a um, a congressional panel, and in front of that panel, he said, "No, we know nothing about how they're sharing," and right behind him was his chief of staff. Who then we found out a month later was was going was the one who told the White House. Now, if the White House had all of these documents, you don't think that they shared these with the with the Department of Justice, which of course is what they were doing because they girl they said that they they have talked to the Department of Justice. So her friend was at the Department of Justice, who called the White House. Mm-hmm. Now this is all illegal, ladies mm-hmm. and gentlemen. This is illegal. You cannot these these unless he changed that law. Did he change that law? Maybe he's, he could do anything he wants. Right. That's from the uh, from the Saturday Night Live. Yeah, right? oh, that was hilarious. Yeah. And yes. you know, the, uh, wherever we can, we follow the law. Yeah, whenever he can. That's and right. the more we're finding out, uh, whenever they can is not very often because they're not following the you know, law. You know, this Koskinen though, he he just comes out and. Like he's just the most honest guy in the world. Oh, you know, I can't believe that they're even questioning me about something like this. And, and then, and then he comes out. And he, well, you know, we don't. Maybe they are all pulling the, the wool over his eyes too, Jim. Maybe, maybe they're telling him, "Hey, there isn't. You know, there's no way we can't get these emails." And then it turns out that, that there is a way they can get the emails. Well, but everybody knew that. I mean, how can you sit there and tell anybody? Everybody knew that there are that there are fall. Everybody breaks. kept saying that. that. You know, that was a couple weeks. Wasn't a couple weeks ago where they came out that the Justice Department admitted it, said, "Oh yeah, we have some backups. It's just really hard to get yeah. to them, and we <laughs> we prefer really- not to." It's really hard. It's like my kid. That's well, yeah, I should have taken out the garbage, but it's like, you know, the, <laughs> I could have done my own work. And, and it was <laughs> kind of hard. And, and I'll get to it eventually, like springtime. They'll be back next week, Dad. I know. <laughs> They'll pick up the garbage next you know, week. Uh, you know, this, <laughs> this, uh, like I said, this started out to be just a joke. It, it really was. I mean, this this section, because it was the IRS show. And this has now turned into something that it, it has been a, a, a precursor of what this administration really I, I agree, is. and it's just like a, a microcosm about the abuse, I think, of the law, that the law means nothing. It means they nothing change, to them. They interpret it. They change it. They they massage it, They uh, and they use it to any way they want. Richard Nixon was almost impeached because of this. I think this is what he wants. He really wants a fight. You, he's, he's coming out right now now challenging Congress, just openly challenging Congress. And Congress is going to have to know, figure out the way th- to answer. I believe he thinks that the people are really behind him. And it'd be, with a 39% approval rating, I don't think that that's a fight you want to have if you're the president. Well, I saw James Carville saying how uh, every Democrat he knows was saying, yeah, yeah. He hasn't been into the black community because the black community is not very happy about this. And someone's going to have to explain to them who is going to, who's these 30 million people going to work for. So the IRS saga is about the IRS doing whatever they want. And if the IRS is doing whatever they want to you, then you need help. You need my help. You need, you should call, give me a call at 312 664 
You can visit us on the web at chicagotextteam.com. You can follow us on Facebook, or you can like and like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Be on the other side. (laughs) Hi, I'm Stephen Leahy, a local Chicago attorney. I believe that God has given each of us unique abilities, and we are to use those abilities to help others. I have helped hundreds of Chicagoans recover from financial disaster. And if the IRS is threatening you with liens, levies, or garnishments, or you have years of unfiled tax returns, I want to help you. Compliance is the first step to resolving your IRS problem, and compliance begins with your 2013 taxes. Are you ready? If you call now, make an appointment, and visit my office for a free confidential consultation, we will complete your personal 2013 tax return at no charge, even if you don't hire me to resolve your IRS problem. Remember, I'm a local Chicago attorney. Investigate me. Simply Google Stephen, with a V, Leahy, L-E-A-H-Y, reviews, to find out what the Better Business Bureau and others have said. Or call me at 312-664-6649. Again, it's 312-664-6649. Visit us on the web at chicagotaxteam.com. Call me today. Welcome back to the IRS Radio Hour with attorney Stephen Leahy. Stephen has helped hundreds of Chicagoans recover from financial disaster, and he wants to help you and your family. There are resolutions, and you will hear about all those resolutions during today's informative discussion on the IRS Radio Hour on AM560, The Answer. Now, here's your host, attorney Stephen Leahy. Welcome back. I am your host, attorney Stephen Leahy, and this is the IRS Radio Hour on AM560, The Answer. The Answer. Well, that was like, like PBS. That's right. That's right. Right. <laughs> they say, talk softly. How is that? And talk right into the microphone, Jim, because that's, cool. that's the way you're supposed to that's do cool. PBS. Cool. What's, what we segment have, are we on now, Jim? We're on, the, on Dr. Fader's segment. It's Dr. Richard Fader from Fort Wayne, Indiana, and he writes this week, Steve. He has a very good question, I believe. He says, can the IRS go after me personally if my company falls behind on payroll taxes? Now, I get this question a lot because many of my clients are business owners, either uh, generally corporations, but sometimes they're sole proprietors. And uh, and then they, they often are having, if they're not paying their uh, the IRS, they're having some financial issues. Yes. And so sometimes their company is also having financial issues, and that's what gets them to they have their own financial issues. That's horrible. <laughs> I know, that's horrible. And so when they come to see me, uh, sometimes they owe the IRS personally. And so one of my questions are always, well, have you been paying your payroll tax? Uh, we're a little bit behind on the payroll tax. And that inevitably causes... Uh, multiple problems, okay, because what happens is the IRS starts going after the business because there's payroll tax issues. And these are quarterly, right? So every quarter I'm supposed to file my 941 tax returns and and file the returns and pay the tax. Uh, If I don't pay the tax, they start piling up. Every quarter I get penalties, and the penalties are fairly severe, right? Because they don't want you to do that. They don't want you to do that. Uh, They don't want you borrowing money from the IRS, to pay to pay your bills and stay open, they they want their money. So remember, what happens with the nine forty one taxes is I I deduct a certain portion from my employees' pay stubs or pay a roll. All right, they have to pay the federal taxes and Medicare and Social Security. So I deduct that from their from their check and then I put it into account and I'm supposed to send it to the IRS. So these are called trust uh, fund taxes. Because they're not, they were never, they're not the company's money. This is somebody else's money that you're holding. And so uh, there's special um, rules for trust fund taxes. And one of those rules, it's called the trust fund recovery penalty. And what this is, is a penalty. That doesn't sound good. No, well, the penalty is that they go after an owner or other responsible party. So I could just be a uh, accountant or a payroll a tax or or a bookkeeper for a company. And if I'm writing checks to my employees and I know the company is not sending in the money to the IRS, I even though I don't own the company, I could be held responsible and then come after me for those taxes. So you have to be very careful about about this. That if doesn't seem right. Well, because because you're participating in them not paying those taxes over to the IRS. And so that's what the IRS call it. Again, they call it a responsible party. So if you're deemed a responsible party, 
well, then the IRS will assess this trust fund recovery penalty against you personally. So now they're trying to collect it from the company. And then now and then they're going to turn around and try to collect the same amount of money from you. Actually, it's not the same amount of money, because, as I mentioned, it, there's there's three different sections when it comes to 941 taxes. You have the you have the uh, employees portion and then you have the employers portion. And then the third the third section is now escaping me. But the, the only part that's called the, the trust fund recovery is that employees portion that they paid in. OK, so that's the that's the part that the that so, they can so, come after me called the trust fund recovery. Let's say you're in between quarters and you're going to you're going to do they charge you. Um, do you have to do it weekly or when do you deposit the money? Sometimes you do have to do it weekly, but generally you're supposed to deposit the money quarterly. Uh-huh. Uh, again, there are companies that have to pay weekly. If you have a big payroll, they want you to pay weekly. And do they charge you interest on that money? Oh, as do they sitting char- in your pocket? Oh, do they charge you interest? So if you're only paying if you quarterly. The, if you miss the quarter, if oh, you miss your payment. Uh-huh. So really, that's uh, what what that is, is like a beefers tax to make you beef on the, on your, on the owner. If <laughs> well, that's, hey, look, they're well, going to take that money from me. I think that's a good, I think you're right about that. Because if they, if they can come after me, I'm not going to let you, no. you know, I don't want anything to do no, with that. You've got to pay the taxes. You're stepping out on the business at that's night. Right. Having, having so, 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 again, the, Riley. so then you have your own, so now you have your own problem. Now this same thing with when you're talking about, um, when you're talking about uh, Illinois, state of Illinois, oh. sales tax. Right, that's not your money as a business. Well, Illinois thinks every, every dollar belongs to them, and, and then you're lucky and, to get and any. And you treat it that way too; they actually do. And another bad thing about this is that and I just mentioned sales tax uh, and this trust fund recovery penalty. They're not dischargeable in bankruptcy. Oh God! So, so if you're having financial problems and your business takes a dive and you have to file bankruptcy. You can't get rid of that tax fund recovery penalty. You can't. You, you that was going to be my next question. Well you, well, you don't. You can't get rid of it in a, in a bankruptcy. So you, you're stuck with it. Now, there's other there's ways to resolve it, uh, and, and that's what we help a lot of people do. We help people resolve it. So a lot of people will come to me. Without jumping? They'll come, <laughs> that's right, jumping off a building. <laughs> uh, a lot of people will come to me about their, their business taxes, and then I'll have to alert them that, well, now you're also probably going to have some personal tax issues with this trust fund recovery. And so it turns into two cases because it's a different issue. It's you know it's a, they come after you personally. So if you're having any of these issues, if you if you own a company and you and you're having problems with the payroll tax, or if you're the payroll tax guy, could he call you? That's the right. You should guy? call him because he's get, might be responsible for this too. Yeah. So you should call me and you should give me a call at three one two six six four. Six six four nine. It's open tax resolution. It's not beefing. If you and the law reliable. office of Stephen A. Leahy, you can visit us on the web at chicagotaxteam.com. Like Never- us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. Oh, he got it right that time. He's been practicing. Yeah, yeah. So uh, meet us on the other side. Hi, I'm Stephen Leahy. And for me, success comes when I help other people. That's why I became an attorney. I know the economy has taken a financial toll on many families and businesses, but I believe that they can recover from their financial problems if they just get the right help. I'm here in Chicago, and I know that if people improve their financial situation, they improve their lives, and I want to help. If the IRS is attacking you with liens, levies, or garnishments, if your mortgage company has threatened foreclosure, or collector's calls are driving you mad, you need help. We listen to your financial situation, find out what's really going on, and develop a workable solution. Remember, I'm right here in Chicago, and your first visit is completely free and confidential. I will tell you on the spot what can be done and what it will cost. If you are looking for help, you've come to the right place. Call me, Stephen Leahy, at 312-664-6649. Again, that's 312-664-6649. Or visit us on the web at chicagotaxteam.com. Call me today. You're listening to the IRS Radio Hour with attorney Stephen Leahy on AM560, The Answer. Attorney Stephen Leahy brings his passion and expertise to your radio each and every week during the IRS Radio Hour. Tune in, take notes, and be educated. Learn your options resolving financial obstacles that face so many. And now, back to the IRS Radio Hour with your host, attorney Stephen Leahy. We are back. And I am your host, Attorney Stephen Leahy, on AM 560, The, the answer. answer. Yes, we are back, Steve. This How is the you? IRS Radio Hour. Don't forget it. 
I, I haven't forgotten. Okay. As a matter of fact, I'm here. So, we're, the so I know we're going to, it's Sunday after Thanksgiving that the show's going to air. And so we don't know what happened with the Bears yet. The Bears. Yeah, well, we do. The Bears. We know that they beat Lovey. That's, that Last was good. Sunday, so that <laughs> was good. Who's so more? Who is more passionate on the sidelines? <laughs> that's right, Trestman or Lord <laughs> Lovey. Right. Everybody fell asleep, <laughs> and we're lucky to get that game over. The problem with this is, ladies and gentlemen, is by the time we talk to you next time, there will be two football games behind us. We could be deeply, deeply, deeply in the hole. Depre- depressed. Depressed. <laughs> we could be depressed. <laughs> we could be kind of happy with one and one, or we could be really upset. With, and, and we could be doing the, the chipmunks yeah. after we'll this. Be doing we're not going to do it this week. No, because they didn't, They won two in a row. Let's see, Steve. Yesterday you said you went to a uh, a thing. and I went, to, I went to the autograph show at Rosemont. And saw and Joey saw Chestnut. Joey Chestnut. The hot dog eater. You know, I mentioned this to some people, and I'm always surprised at how many people know who he is. And, he, you know, he ate 66 hot dogs in 12 minutes. That's an amazing thing. I don't really think those are hot dogs. Though. No, they're, they're hot dogs. And I, I, I never watched it until after I got his autograph. And so I, I watched him eat them. And it's, it's kind of a disgusting thing to watch. Do we eat them in hell? Oh, no. Like, <laughs> do we cheat them in hell? <laughs> exactly. So it, it, but it was good. It was a good show that Kirk Gibson and, uh, and uh, Anthony Rizzo was there. Tony. And, Tony uh, called. And uh, uh, Tome. Uh, so and oh, you know they were talking today that maybe because uh, the, uh, they have to move a uh, sanitary thing or a water main now I that, saw that there might not be bleachers for the first game for the first game. At I Field. believe that's the way that the Alderman says. Oh geez, yeah. I don't know if we're going to have the bleachers for the my brother in law does, <laughs> how, move, does, right. how does much water that, mains. How much will that cost you? That's right. <laughs> Oh, this is going to cost that. I got a fundraiser coming up on Thursday, <laughs> and I think maybe if you need a new water, man, you better be I'm sure that. he's given, given, given to them. Give, I, I give, and they and just give keep holding on. Well, you, you know, I can't me? help it. It's a water, man. Who knew, Jim? Uh, you know, I, I'm just the alderman here. I wish I could help you, uh, you know, but the fact is... Uh, this could cost you a lot of money. <laughs> I'm sure it would. <laughs> I have seen, a brother-in-law I don't know if who seen does the, these kind of things. I don't know if you've seen the pictures of, of Wrigley, but it's an amazing, uh, it, it's kind of disheartening. Well, it is, yeah. I mean, I, I, uh, my son Jimmy yesterday was telling me, well, they should have started. Said, they started the next day, the day after they the did. last pitch. Yeah, they did. They started ripping the seats Remember, off. they were talking about going to the cell for a season. Boo. Yeah, I could, Boo. I'm a season ticket holder. I'm not going to the cell for a season. No way. What are you kidding? It's a whole different thing. I'm not going to no, it's like when the Bears right. went to uh, yeah, Bourbon Hayes or well, did they go to Champagne? Yeah, they were Whatever. Champagne. Wherever they went. It wasn't here and it was a... It was the kind Chicago of... Cardinals belong down there. That's far <laughs> south. That's so. when you know you're a, a, a real Chica- old-time Chicagoan. When well, you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're I Chicago read it in Cardinals. a book. I'm, I'm very young. I'm young and, <laughs> uh, and virile. So I read in a book that we used to have two football teams here. As a matter of fact, that was the first football team here. Back in the day. And now yeah. it's in Arizona. So there's a little, there's a history lesson for you kids out there, for all you kids. And remember, leave your hockey stick on the on the <laughs> ice, you kids. And that's the only way you're going to score. Eddie Old Check. He's, the, he's the greatest. So the, and the Blackhawks have been watching. The Black, they're on their circus trip. The Endables. And what's going on with Derek Rose, Jim? I, I don't know. Derek, sit down for a little while. Get your yeah, hamstring that, going. Nothing's wrong with him, but take the take the half off. That's we don't right. need you. So like I said, we got two Bears games before the next time we're on. So just uh, take the, the take that uh, that uh, bone, the wishbone, and whoever wins, at least take one of the, the Wish for a victory for the wish Bears. Wish for the Bears. And remember, if you're having IRS problems, you should give us a call at 312-664-6649. You can go to the website at chicagotaxteam.com, and you can join us next week at 5 o'clock. Like us and follow us.